two months ago, the idea of creating a prairie fascinated me. But it looked deserted. However, life and amphibians found their way even here. But hail, sand, dust storms, biblical catastrophes, does anyone have hope to survive in the prairie? On the first day, I placed the most fertile soil into the terrarium, even so covered everything with sand. The prairie is rich in life and extremely poor in comfort. It looks lifeless, but soon, spring began. The first sprouts of life appeared. And seeing the wild growth of grass, that's happiness. The foundation of life in any world. On the tenth day, animals appeared. First, tiny bright firebugs enjoyed the awakening nature. These little ones suck juices from young sprouts. Soon, caterpillars appeared as well. It seems to be a European species, which means we are in Europe. And it would be more correct to call this prairie a steppe, when suddenly the first sign of trouble. Locusts! They often arrive in steppe system, devouring all vegetation in their path. But for now, the invasion doesn't look too frightening. What's scarier is the rapidly increasing number of young firebugs and caterpillars. To balance the system, we need a predator. A wall lizard, a swift hunter of any small prey. Hope it help us to keep the balance. Grass keeps growing more and more. And in its shade closer to the ground, isopods and even little snails appeared. And it's amazing how they can find enough moisture in such a hot, difficult place for survival. I hope they won't die of drying out. In the morning, the step gets heavy dew. And apparently, that brief moment is enough for the animals to restore moisture. Here and there, I notice more and more webs and tiny burrows. The caterpillars keep multiplying. So many of these caterpillars hatched literally from nowhere and stick out of every hole, busily working their jaws, eating the grass. Isopods don't lag behind and actively compete with them, not to mention the locusts. Their pressure on the grassy part of the ecosystem is very high. Bare spots appeared. I never thought I'd see isopods fighting with caterpillars over grass. Even the animals themselves feel that all of them, isopods, bugs, snails, caterpillars, are already getting out of control. Our little shy lizard clearly can't cope with such an amount of prey. This step needs a new predator. This slow worm. It looks like a snake, but also a lizard, legless one. It lives underground, and I hope these crawling creatures will suit its taste and will be able to balance the system. One day I found a wonderful grasshopper, and it joins the step system. Its whimsical look is beautiful, it gladly joins the feast and happily eats the grass. Another foggy morning brings strange news. The air is still, unbearable heat sets in. Even the modest snails seal themselves tightly inside their shells. Only the slow worm easily avoid the heat, quickly hiding in its underground burrow without a care. When suddenly a gust of wind brings awful clouds, a storm breaks out. Terrible thunder drives everyone without exception to hide. This is a storm. The cloud has brought hail. Ice chunks pound the ground like bullets. But like any disaster, the storm will fade. Hail is the common thing in the steppe. But ice melts and feeds the ground with moisture, so necessary for life. Alas, not everyone survived the storm. Over time, the isopods will deal with the dead. Nothing will be wasted. Day brings joy. Fresh sprouts have appeared in the steppe. 
mushrooms sprouted here and there, and lovely flowers blooming. The firebugs and isopods have clearly decreased, but it seems more and more locusts are appearing. The entire steppe is filled with pleasant and so familiar sounds. These animals literally create the step wipe, but which of our predators will be able to deal with them? Their appetite is incredible. They eat, eat, and it seems soon there will be no intact plant left in the ecosystem. So it's time for magic. The green toad, a superhero, they easily survive in the driest regions, conquer cities and deserts and will definitely help us control the locusts. As the coolest hunter, the green toad is a master of camouflage and can change its color depending on lighting and mood. One of our bugs seems to have changed color too. Look how unusual and beautiful it is. Maybe it is just molded though. And its real color will appear again soon. But toads can change their color constantly. And now, from dull brown, they have turned bright, blending perfectly with this step. The prey won't notice a thing. It has no chance. The feast begins. Things would be easier if our superheroes were more agile. But it is what it is. It's Wednesday, my dudes. When days get too hot, our toads have to hide in burrows. That's their main secret. Underground, it's always quite cool and the air is moist. Ideal conditions for an amphibian, although absolutely unsuitable for hunting. On the 40th day, the steppe was visited by a ladybug. This incredibly beautiful beetle is actually also a predator. In nature, they hunt aphids. But I think it came here for the firebugs babies and the moths' eggs. Yes, those annoying caterpillars have finished their transformation. And now they are silver butterflies and their population definitely needs to be controlled. So it's perfect that ladybug is here. And the increasing amount of feces also needs to be controlled. That's why scarabs are here. Dung beetles. I'm not sure they will be able to roll a ball out of all that has piled up here and push it like in nature, but they'll definitely help with hygiene. The toads eat everything and immediately try to catch the scarabs. But that's not so easy. The beetles are too large and tough for them. Unfortunately, despite all efforts to achieve the balance, the plants in the ecosystem were becoming fewer and fewer. Sandstorms begin. Life becomes unbearable. The bugs and isopods have nothing left to do in this nightmare. The animals need saving. Plants played an important role in holding back the sand. Maybe I should have added more toads, and then we could have saved this step. But now, locusts destroyed all grass and a lot of sand and the imbalance caused the death of the ecosystem. It is completely destroyed, but super toads can live even in deserts, right? That means there is hope and you will see its sprouts literally in my next video.